Hi everyone, my name is Sima. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking about the epic highs and lows of the Montreal Canadiens playoff run while I paint myself to look like a clown because I'm feeling quite clown-like, to be honest with you. So I've done one kind of quasi-insane video in this genre. I've done a lot of insane videos, but like in this genre specifically where I like ramble about something and then paint my face. And that was where I painted myself to look like an Among Us character. So I I'll be taking a lot of cues from that video and using the exact same makeup. So I'm using this Maron Paradise makeup palette. It has these colors. And then if I also feel like I need it, I also have this like a purple one from when I was Ursula for Halloween once, but I don't know if I'm gonna dip into that. And then I have a bunch of brushes and I have some water. These are water activated paints. They're very easy to use. You just like dip a brush in water, dip it in the paint, voila. <sighs> Sorry if my hair looks insane. It is very hot. It is very humid. It has frizzed up like a lot. I tried to reduce that by putting it down, but then I had to like push it back with this hairband that I use to wash my face usually. And I'm realizing now that this headband has bunny ears and it seems like I'm making some sort of like joke about puck bunnies, which is like not what's happening at all. But I didn't think before I put them on. So I just like these because like I get makeup on them a lot and they're really easy to wash in the wash. Like stuff just comes out of them really easily. Before we get started, I also want to make one more thing clear. This isn't because I think the team are clowns. Like we're not talking about the Leafs or anything here. This is because I feel like a clown because of the level to which my mental and frankly physical well-being relied on like the highs and lows of this team during playoffs. Like I got way more invested than I was anticipating and it did a number on me, which we'll get into. But for the team, like as for the team itself, I am like so, like so incredibly proud of them. Like I have nothing but good things to say about the Montreal Canadiens and their 2021 run and just like everything they did this year. Like I, <laughs> I'm so proud of them, which is so weird. I've never met them, but I'm like, <laughs> I just think about them and it makes me so happy. Also, sorry if my nails are kind of wonky. I like just painted them and I haven't had time to like clean the, the clean up the edges yet. So they might be a little nuts, but I also can't tell if you can tell on camera. Anyway, I'm rambling. I'm just gonna jump right in. I have some reference photos of clowns on my phone that I'm gonna look at. The one thing that really irked me, to be honest with you, is when you look up clown makeup, most of the results are just like people being either sexy clowns for Halloween or like creepy clowns. It's like, no, I wanna be like the traditional clown, the kind of clown that is there for you to laugh at because like that's what I am to myself. That is what I think this video and other videos that are equally unhinged on the internet are for. Like I'm just here for like a traditional, please laugh at me type of clown. So we're just going like full like white face, bright red lips, insane like shapes, colorful stuff. That kind of like traditional clown look is what we're gonna do while we talk about this. I'm going to grab this brush and get it wet and then just dip into the white shade in this palette. I might have to scrape off a bit actually because I my white shade, I don't know if you can tell, is like super blue from when I did my Among Us makeup. So I might have to like somehow like scrape it off. I don't know how I'm gonna get to like the true white. It might backfire on me and turn out blue, but we'll see how it goes. Oh yeah, that's blue. That's so blue. I probably should have scraped that off. I'm just gonna get it wet and try to get to the white underneath and hope for the best. I'm hoping if I don't dip into the blue at all, like I don't cross dip, it'll just like eventually get back to being white. So we'll see. Oh, there we go. See, that's already better. Anyway, so also shout out to my friend Elaine. This whole video was her idea. Uh, Cause I was like, nobody wants to listen to me talk about hockey because I am not gonna pretend I in any way feel like I'm an expert in hockey. I have not a lot of like technical things to add of value. Like all I have to go off of is like emotions. I get very emotional about hockey and that's kind of it. Like I'm not gonna pretend I understand. Like I, I get like the basics of the game. Like I get the premise. I get most of the rules. Some of the rules I still don't understand. Like I've tried to understand and I have read about them and I still get confused. And I feel like I need somebody like on a hockey rink to like show me for me to finally like, get it. Because there's just some things where I'm like, I've read it 8,000 times and I still like the, the technical explanation doesn't make sense to me. I think I just need to see it to get it. But I'm also like afraid of seeking out people that actually have the knowledge to explain it to me because not to dunk on a whole bunch of people, but I feel like a lot of people who are into hockey, like severely into hockey, are kind of like elitist dudes who will not take kindly to people wanting to know more and will will actually like take it as an excuse to like dunk on you like horrendously. So I'm kind of like apprehensive about seeking out more. But anyway, so like th this is not coming from that kind of thing. I'm not gonna hear I'm not here to tell you about like which players I think are like gonna blossom into superstars in the next five years or whatever, because like I don't know. Like I'm sorry, like I can I can tell you who I thought looked good, but I have no like, instinct, I have no idea what's gonna happen with trading this season. I don't understand anything about how like, like I've been trying to understand the thing with Shea Weber's like cap, re like salary recapture penalty thing. Like if he retires before his contract is over, like, and I don't understand it. <laughs> so like, if you're here for like technical stuff, this is the wrong video. We're here for clowning and only clowning. See, it's getting whiter like progressively, right? So like, this is not what this is for. If you're here to like tell me I shouldn't talk about hockey or I don't know anything or like, 
my opinion is not valuable, go somewhere else because I'm not gonna stop. You know why? Because I make, like my views make the NHL the exact same amount of money as your views do. The NHL does not care if I know about hockey, if I give a shit about hockey, as long as I have my butt parked watching their stupid games and buying their stupid merchandise. They don't care. So frankly, neither should you. Because actually that's the real enemy. The real enemy is the NHL. <laughs> not me running my mouth while not knowing enough about the sport. I always forget how stupid I feel doing this, but also like weirdly freeing. Like, I swear, if you're in like a bad headspace, just get some face paint and go like ape shit. Like just do something dumb and you will feel so much better. I almost contemplated doing the Habs logo, but I just like don't want to desecrate it in that manner because I still have too much respect for like the Montreal Canadiens as like an institution. And it also, like I would be like a unhinged victory video and we obviously didn't win the Stanley Cup. If we had won, maybe I would have. If we had won, I actually was gonna buy another jersey. Also, the reason I'm not wearing my jersey is because I, I didn't want to get paint on it. I have one, I swear. I just like, I don't want to get paint on it. So we're using a pajama shirt, but I don't mind if it gets all messed up. Even though this is water soluble and it should all come out, I am paranoid, so we're not doing that. I'm so rambly, I'm so sorry. What I was saying, I keep going over this part because I keep wanting to make it like whiter and less blue. And I don't know if it's gonna work, but I am gonna keep trying. Anyway, maybe if I, we had won the cup, I would have done this video and painted my face with like the Habs logo or something. I almost like, if we had actually like gotten into the position where we like, like could have won the Stanley Cup, like if it had been like a game, if somehow we'd like gotten the lead in the series or if it had been like a game seven type scenario, I probably would have done like some sort of like legitimate, like genuine like Habs makeup tutorial. Cause I was thinking about that. Like I really wanted to do some kind of like red, white and blue like Habs look, but I was saving it for if we were in the position to actually be winning the cup. And so it, it just never came to fruition. So I'm gonna save it for the next time we're at the Stanley Cup finals. I'm not actually talking about what I thought I was gonna talk about in this video, which was the epic highs and lows and how this playoff run did a number to like my psyche. I feel like I kind of like briefly touched on this and then I didn't actually finish my thought. But the reason I'm doing this video is because my friend Elaine was like, I didn't care about how the Habs were doing it all until you started talking about them incessantly in our group chats. And then I got super invested because you were so stoked and invested and excited. And you know what? That's a really nice compliment. Like if someone tells you they're interested in something solely because of your enthusiasm for it, that's a high compliment, right? So I was, so she was like, you should do this insane. She didn't tell me to put on the clown face paint. That part was my idea because I am an insane person. But she was like, you should just do a video where you talk about the Habs. And I was like, no one's gonna wanna listen to me ramble because I don't have hockey like insight. But if I make it stupid by putting on face paint, that'll get people. Cause people love when people on the internet make fools out of themselves is what I've noticed. You know, like we like looking at people and being like, well, my life is bad. But that person who is having cri a crisis and is clearly posting a video that is a cry for help, their life is worse. Case in, case in point, this is probably some kind of cry for help. Like, I don't know if my, if my therapist knew about this, I don't know if she would think I was well, which is probably like a safe assumption to make. The one thing with these paints is, and I don't know if I'm just like bad at using them, but they get so like splotchy so easily. Like I keep going over this because I just really want it to be whiter. And I don't know if that's gonna happen because it just keeps getting splotchier. Anyway, so as you can see, I have done an admirable job, I think, of giving myself a nice white base to work off here. Although let me look at my picture because I feel like, and I've got like white all over my fingers, but I feel like perhaps I should also go over my eyes because if I want to do like shapes on my eyeballs, right? Like I think I need to make my eyelids also white. I don't think my face ID on my iPhone is gonna work right now. I'm not even gonna try it. Maybe for fun, I'll try at the end and see if it works. Okay, yeah, I do think I need to fully go in. I think most clowns don't have eyebrows, but like my eyebrows are too big to cover. So we're not going to even attempt that. Anyway, so the, the epic highs and lows, right? Like I am here to clown on myself for how invested I got because like I, I'll be real with you guys. I used to really like hardcore follow the Habs and it just got really like bad for me. <laughs> like it literally like would affect my mental health. And so I had to stop because I get too emotionally invested in this stuff. So for example, when PK Subban got traded to Nashville in exchange for Shea Weber, who I love dearly and I'm like, literally so happy he's our captain. Like I would not want anyone else to be our captain. But when that trade happened, it devastated me. And I feel like it devastated a lot of people. So I don't think that's a surprise to like anybody. But Jesus Christ, these paints on my eyeballs are really something. It is so fucking late. I'm so not well. That trade like broke my heart. And like I fully had to like not pay attention to hockey for a bit. And not to dunk on the Habs because I love them. But they made it very easy because those were not, I'm not going to pretend the years after that were their finest moments. Like they had moments, but it was not like the greatest hits of the Montreal Canadiens by any means from like 2016 to like now, right? Like they had moments, but it was not like, we were not superstars out there, I don't think. But again, I could be wrong because I had to like disengage from my mental health. So I'm sure there were moments that I missed where it was like, this is the team 
Um, like I, yeah, like I, I, I dipped like, I dipped before the Max Pacioretty Nick Suzuki trade happened. And I came back and it was like, oh, Max is gone. <laughs> and we have Nick, who I love dearly. So again, not upset about that, but like I said, I was not paying the most attention. And so even this season, I kind of was like, okay, interesting team, interesting roster. It's a pandemic still and I'm still at home, so I have nothing to really do. But I know how like invested I get in this stuff and it's probably not good for my mental health to tune into this. So I kind of like Lucy followed, but I was not like really paying attention. Like I was genuinely like, I'll be real. I was surprised we qualified for playoffs, excited, but like I was like, okay, this is like, I'm just happy to be here. Like fully my attitude for playoffs was I'm happy to be here because I didn't think we were going to be. Um, because we started the season out strong and then it was kind of rough and then I was like not really paying attention. We were in playoffs and then, you know, it was against Toronto, so that was kind of fun. I live in Toronto, so it was kind of like cool. I'm going to be like the one Habs fan in a sea of ugly ass blue and white Leafs jerseys. Reader, I was worrying about the wrong ugly ass blue and white jerseys, to be honest with you. That's all. I actually, I don't think the Leafs jersey is ugly. I actually think the, the logo is pretty cute. I think blue and white is a nice color scheme. I think my favorite, to be honest, jersey is maybe Nashville. I love the Preds logo. I love the, 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 the shade of yellow they've picked. It's just so, it's such a nice color. So anyway, off, that's off topic. But I was just like, you know, this is gonna be miserable because I'm in this city, but I'm gonna enjoy it because it's gonna be like fun. No matter what happens, like I know everybody thinks we're gonna go like get swept or it's gonna be like an, an easy, path to the next round for the Leafs who have not qualified for the second round of playoffs since 2004, I believe, because, you know, we love a flop team. We don't, we hate a flop team. Not because they suck, we just hate them because, I don't know, rivalries or something. I just like, as someone who lives in Toronto, I think it's like, it's really funny when Leafs fans throw fits. Is that like perhaps cruel of me? Yes, but I think when you have an ego that is that large, it's kind of funny that the universe keeps dunking on you, but I also think like, it's interesting interacting with Leafs fans because their team is like awful and they will fully, like they, they know their team is awful, right? Like they, they, they know they have not qualified for the second round of play or they have not like won a playoff series basically since 2004, right? Like they know this and yet, right? Which is like, you have to kind of admire the loyalty and also the fact that like nobody will dunk on the Leafs more than the Leafs. But also because of just like the way the world works, I have to also dunk on the Leafs because that's just like, I guess how the rule of sport is you have to dunk on your rivals or something. I also just like, like I just also, as someone who lives in Toronto, I think Torontonians have like huge egos. So I think it's fun to dunk on them at any like possible opportunity because of just like the way they interact with the world around them. I don't know if this is getting any better. So I'm just gonna like let it dry for a bit and then decide what my next move is gonna be. This is so ridiculous. I, <laughs> ladies, it's clown hours. <laughs> you think if I posted this on like Tinder or Bumble, <laughs> people would match with me. <laughs> like, is this a look? Is this what the kids are doing? Oh God, I feel like I need a towel or something. My hands are so wet, but I'm just gonna let it dry. So anyway, I need to, I keep not finishing my sentence. My point was I needed to like not pay attention to the Habs because when I get too invested in sports, like I can't sleep, which happened to be during playoffs. Like I fully could not sleep some nights. I get stressed, I have weird stress dreams. I get physical symptoms. Like I, like I spent all of playoffs like with like a splitting headache like weird shoulder aches, back aches, um, stomach, like I had the worst, like ch I had chest like pain. I had like stomach aches. Like I was having like digestive issues because I literally was just like so incredibly stressed because I just get like, I get too invested. And I don't like, it's not even like a, like it's not even for me. Like the thing with me is like, I don't know if this is the same for everybody. Like I could be totally wrong with me. Everybody experiences sports these ways. But I feel like a lot of people experience sports and that like they identify with the team and they want the team to win because like, it's like an extension of them or whatever. <sighs> for me, it's like I get attached to the players and then I, like, I don't want it for me. Like, I am totally fine. Like, I, obviously I want like, the Habs to win a Stanley Cup, but I'm fine waiting another, like, fuck it, like 28 years for a Stanley Cup. Like, I'm fine with that because I will probably like, be around in 28 years time to see it. But for me, it's like, it, what gets my goat is like players not winning Stanley Cups. Like, my thing with me is I really wanted um, Shea Weber and like Carey Price especially. Carey Price and like Brendan Gallagher, but like, especially like K Carey Price, I wanted him to win a Stanley Cup so badly. For me, it was like, okay, I can't watch people who have put their whole lives into something fail at it, like it, basically is, is, is the gist of it. Like it really, it does like, I, I, I just, not to be like, I'm an empath because like I'm not, I, I, I think like people who identify as empaths are like, that's a red flag. Like if you call yourself an empath, you're not an empathetic person. Like that's a red flag to me. But I just like, I feel too much for those players. And so like, I literally, I literally can't do it. I'm just gonna grab this red and like, just put on like a little red circle nose. I think that's an easy part of clownery. So yeah, I just like get too invested and I literally just cannot do it for that like very specific reason. This is kind of cute. Clowns are like kind of cute as like a concept, you know? Anyway, yeah, so I like, it's it's the it's the emotional turmoil of like having to watch people be emotional and suffer and like not get like, not like basically have their dreams crushed. <laughs> like that gets me so bad. 
Oh god, my teeth look so yellow when my face is this white. Jesus. So like that's what gets me so bad. So which is why like I hate when they like cut to like like the, the losing team like crying or comforting comforting each other or like just like looking really depressed or like anguished or like getting on their like being on their knees on like the ice. I can't do it. When they have like those emotional interviews where they're like trying, like you can tell they're trying not to cry. So like when the Isles lost their series and they had like Matt Barzal and like all those people, like and they had like the like Islanders answering questions, like very clearly like pushing past tears. Brendan Gallagher being like looking like he like lost a fight with a bear and then having to like try not to cry while answering questions like that shit like gets me. And especially when it's like a team with an older core like this, where I'm like, okay, like I don't know how many more years, like you, you have years, obviously, like, I don't think Harry Price is gonna retire tomorrow, but like you have a limited number of opportunities to do this. And so like, I just get like so emotionally, like empathetically like attached that like it, like I can't, I cannot follow sports year round. Like, like power to people who can, but I literally do not have the emotional stability to follow sports year round. Like, I don't know how people do it. Like doing it for playoffs, like wrecked me, like health wise, <laughs> like fully, like I, was not like I made jokes about this, but like my like I literally was like li like living with headaches for like three weeks straight for everything from like the Jet series onward. I like it just like my headache didn't go away from the Vegas series onward. Like the Jet series, I didn't really have like like I had headaches, but I didn't have stomach aches. But from like the Vegas series onwards, I had stomach aches. Like it was like not good. I would have dreams. I would have nightmares. I could not sleep. And this is not to like again. I don't want men to like take this and run with it and be like this is why women should not be allowed to like pay attention to sports. No, it literally is just a me problem. Like I know plenty of women who are like very invested in sports and like actually understand sports and don't have insane reactions to them the way I do. That is all to say that I cannot pretend I was paying attention to them much until like midway through the Toronto series where I was like this is kind of interesting because again it was like it, as everyone and their moms have said to death it was three one. And we all know how that ended, right? I think what I'm going to do next is, yeah, I'm gonna take some blue and just do some blue like diamonds on my eyes. Cause I feel like clowns do that, right? Me, known clown expert. The other thing I read today that made me feel better and I think maybe like feel emotionally stable enough to actually do this was Topeka Rene retired. He is slash was Nashville's goalie for what, like 12 years? Very long time. And I was reading his, oh God. I don't think I can do this with a steady hand because I don't have a steady hand, but I was reading his Players' Tribune article where he talks about like, well, he, he was just like saying his goodbyes and like talking about like his career and like why this was like the moment to like retire, et cetera, et cetera. Like all the stuff you do when you retire, right? Like I wouldn't know because I've never retired from anything, but presumably like just like all the reflection you do when you re retire from something that you put like a lot of your life into. Oh God, this is so terrible. Anyway, I was reading his Players' Tribune article and he's another, well, one thing, I love goalies, like, and I feel like a lot of people say this, like, goalies are just, like, so fun, like, even if I have beef with a team, I will never have beef with their goalies, like, I, as much as Vasilevsky, like, broke my heart during the Tampa series because he was, like, a brick wall, I don't have any beef with him specifically because I love goalies and I will never not love goalies, but Paco Rene is another goalie who never won a Stanley Cup and he's so good at what he does, oh god, these, these lines are, like, so not good. Can I fix this with the white somehow? Oh fuck, I don't know if I made it worse or better, but we're trying here, we're trying to fix the situation. Anyway, he was another player that like never won a Stanley Cup and I just like felt for him, man. But like reading his Players Tribune article where he just talks about his career and how he like doesn't, like yeah, obviously he's sad about it, but like he thinks about that run like really fondly. That made me feel so much better about this year. Like not to make it about me or to make it about Carrie Price, but I just like, it just made me feel better that I was like, even if this was it, like even if like Carrie Price, and I don't think it is. Like I, again, I think our core is really, like it's staying together. And I think this year shows that they have a lot of potential. And I, we have the young kids who are like, just gonna get better, right? But I was like, even if this is somehow it, like this is the one and only time that Carrie Price will ever see a Stanley Cup final. It's fine, like he, he'll be fine. <laughs> Cause again, my, my whole thing is I don't care about it for me. <laughs> I care about it for them and like their like well-being. And I'm like, he's, and like obviously I think you can't get far in pro sports without having like that kind of mentality of like, you know how to lose and you can lose with grace and it's not gonna like send you into a big spiraling like mental health crisis, hopefully. And even if it does like, no, this is not to like rag on people having mental health crises. Cause I think, again, I think it should be normalized for big macho men in sports to talk about their mental health more. But generally I think when you competitively win and lose, like as, as your job, you probably are better at it than some random girl who sits at home and doesn't competitively win or lose anything. But like reading that and just reading how he was like, I like he wasn't like sitting around, like he was sad about it still, but he wasn't like sitting around like languishing about, you know, 
how his whole life he worked towards this one thing and he didn't get he didn't get it so like it's the worst thing it's like his life is awful and terrible and over which would not be like a healthy way of handling it at all and I, I do expect these people to not feel that way because obviously they have a lot of good things in their lives and a lot of privileges and also they make millions of dollars but it just made me feel better about the whole thing where I was like okay this is a man who went through pretty much the same thing here's a guy going through the exact same thing like cup final but no cup retiring without it but has like a stellar career with all these other like achievements and accolades etc behind him and he's looking back on it and he's like I'm fine like sure I didn't get the cup but it's fine like I have nothing but fondness for my time in this city and with this team and that's like that's like all the reassurance I wanted anyways I'm sorry I'm just like this is not even what this video is about like I'm gonna get to my epic highs and lows of playoffs in a second I swear but this isn't even really that it's literally just like a, an avenue for me to paint my face and emotionally let things out via face paint while just talking about hockey to be honest because I don't know I feel like I don't know enough about hockey to talk about talk about hockey with people who care about hockey and most of my friends don't care about hockey enough to listen to me ramble about it because they don't care so I'm trying to turn myself into a clown where I just ramble about whatever hockey thought crosses my mind for like an hour it works for me anyway what I was saying was the Pekka Rinne thing really helped me <laughs> Not to turn his retirement into how it helps my feelings and my emotions and how I feel about Carey Price, but it really did. And that is a really healthy mindset that I'm sure Carey Price also has. Like, I'm sure no matter what happens in the next few years, he's going to look back on his career and, like, hopefully be, like, happy with, <laughs> with it and, like, not just be sitting around, like, thinking about, like, the what-ifs of, like, you know, if he could get a cup. This is fun. Yeah, my face ID does not know who I am right now. It's, like, not working. Okay, I'm going to make my lips red, I guess, which is going to make it hard to talk, but that's okay. Maybe I should like draw on like what I want my clown lips to look like. Should I do that? Anyway. The other thing about Pekka Rinne I love is that he has scored a goal. This doesn't happen often in the NHL, but as someone who thinks you should just let goalies score at this point, like let, let, let Carey Price do the goal scoring. Like he does everything else. Why not? I love when goalies score and I love that Pekka Rinne scored. I think it's fun. I think it's so, it's, it's so cute. I'm so glad he got that before his career ended. And I think Carey Price should also score before his career ends. I'm so off topic. I'm so sorry. Anyways, okay, so let's actually talk about like what the epic highs and lows of, of, of the playoffs, right? Like, for one thing, just like the team, like I, like every single member of this team, I just like look at it and I'm like, I love you. I'm so fond of you. You are a stellar human. I think, I don't know, but just like, I just, and this is so cheesy, but it just felt so like, like a family. Like, I, I know I'm only looking from the outside in, but they just felt like such a family and they were so scrappy. Like they never gave up. Like they were down 3-1 to Toronto and everybody had them counted out. Everyone counted them out for every single series and they never gave up. Like they believed in themselves and like that's just that hurt brought me so much joy. I love underdog stories. I love scrappiness. I love like just on paper, never give up attitudes when everyone says you're, you should give up, you know? Cool. These are lips, right? <laughs> oh, I'm so, I'm so mentally unwell. So I love that part. One of the things that I just think about following me, it was what, like our epic penalty kill streak was like what, 30 penalty kills that we did? Like we didn't get scored on? That streak we had where we just like, we're, like didn't trail any games for like what was it like 400 minutes or something insane like that 420 I think we like beat a bunch of records and like became like second in the league ever to not be trailing for that long second only to ourselves I believe like it was just like fun it was just fun to be like and like just going like it like it really was like a Cinderella run like I don't think anyone like I don't I, I'm not gonna like pretend like everybody who was like on paper the Habs are not should not be here I'm not gonna pretend these people were wrong like it was like a crazy Cinderella run but like that's what made it fun you know, like, full offense to like Tampa Bay, but what's a better story? Like Tampa Bay coming back to beat, like win again in a city that doesn't like fundamentally give a shit about hockey all that much. Like in proportion to its population, I'm not gonna pretend there are no like legitimate Bolts fans. Like I know that's not true and everyone's gonna be like, oh, why do you like pretend Tampa Bay has no fans? They have fans. But I just think comparatively speaking, like the proportion of people in Florida who care about hockey or hell, the proportion of people in like Las Vegas or Los Angeles who care about hockey compared to the percentage of people in the city of Montreal who care about hockey, right? What is a better story? The epic underdog story of the Montreal Canadiens coming back and beating three series when everyone counted them out for every single series. Is that a better story? And like getting all their veterans, like finally getting a Stanley Cup after like, for Carey Price, what, like a de book over a decade of trying? And for the city, 28 years of waiting, like is that a better story? Or is the better story extremely stacked team that is $18 million over the salary cap does the thing again that they did last year like i'm not gonna pretend tampa shouldn't celebrate or like that their win doesn't count or there's an asterisk about around it because i think that's stupid like i think people that do that stuff are like dumb like no matter like how you're gonna stack it like they won but 
I'm not gonna pretend the Habs didn't have the, the more compelling storyline. And had that storyline like come to fruition, like had they actually won the cup, that shit would've been like immediately like movie worthy, like sell the rights like right away. Nothing Tampa did's like that memorable. Like I know, like, is, is that salty perhaps, but like, am I wrong? I don't think so. So anyways, penalty kill, not trailing streak. The freaking shorthanded goals, like how many shorthanded goals do we have? Like a metric fuck ton? Like we were like, actually it's our penalty now. Like we're gonna power play, shorthanded, fuck you. It was just fun, it was fun. It was fun to root for a team with no quit. <laughs> I look so ridiculous actually. Fellas, are you ever mentally ill? I kind of understand the Joker in this moment, you know? Like I feel like with this makeup on and just holding in the information in my head that Tampa Bay damaged the Stanley Cup and it had to be, it's, it's now going back to Montreal to be repaired before send, being sent back to Tampa Bay, which is a thing that fucking happened. I feel like with this makeup on, I could, I could probably summon like the energy and the speed and the power of like a Norse God and then like start smashing things and like not stop. Like, you know what I mean? Which is the thing that happened. Tampa Bay Lightning damaged the Stanley Cup and now it's being sent back to Montreal to be repaired. Which it makes me legit, like I think we should just like not give it back. Like borders are closed, sorry. It's, it's our cup now, sorry, you can't have it back. But also like I know it's not like, like I want us to have a legitimate cup. Oh no, I got face paint on my teeth. I want us to have a legitimate cup, but I also think we shouldn't give it back to, to, to Tampa Bay. You know, like you can have your cup back when you stop fucking damaging it. When you learn how to play with your toys without breaking them, you can have your cup back. What else was a great moment? It wasn't like great because people were getting injured, but I think our blood sacrifices were pretty fun. Just the meme that became like, Corey Perry's knows that apparently was not a fucking penalty. Blood sacrifice so we could win the series. Jeff Petrie's like bloodshot eyes. Blood sacrifice to the gods so we could win the series. Brendan Gallagher, again, looking like he'd been mauled. Blood sacrifice so we could win the fucking series. And you know what, that last one didn't work, but I like that we tried it. I like that we were like blood for the blood gods, you know? Like just the memes were funny. The one thing that also just like made me very, very like ooh, ooh inside was just like the Winnipeg series, right? Like on paper, was that very interesting? No, it was like over pretty quickly. Like we swapped the Jets, whatever, blah, blah, blah. But like after the hit with Jake Evans and Mark Shifley, that's his name, right, Mark? Anyway, look, that was such a horrifying thing to watch. Like genuinely like awful, terrible thing to watch. And having them, like, have, like watching that and then seeing them like come back and finish the series like that to sweep the Jets. It was kind of like, I don't know. Again, if this was a movie, it would be like, we did it for him. We did it for, for Jake Evans. And it was just nice. It was just like a sweet, sweet little moment. And I think, like, allow me to romanticize your stupid male sport, please. Like, please, just let me, let me be a dumb romantic about it. I think, I think things should be romanticized more. I think things happen for a reason. I don't think things happen for, I don't think people get like concussions for a reason, but I just mean like the fact that that happened and then we like, we came back to win that series in the spectacular fashion that we did. I don't know, there's something about that. It compels me. I'm just trying to fucking clean up the shit that I have unleashed with this white paint that I really fucked up with. I'm just trying to clean it up. I'm being super careful with it because it's really hard to clean it up without making things worse. Okay, I'm gonna leave it there. Oh my God, we, the, our overtime goals were like beautiful. Like how many diving shots do we have? KK's, KK's sh overtime goal to get us that game seven with Toronto. Josh Anderson's goal during the finals that got us the, like didn't, <laughs> had us not get swept, which is really all I wanted out of the Tampa Bay series was I literally was just like, please don't get swept. That's all I want. Like at this point, like I, like I kind of had a feeling, like after, I think with, with the, the Tampa Bay series was after game two, I kind of was like, okay, if we can't win this, like if we couldn't win game two, which was like the most like in our favor game, I like with the amount of shots on goal we had, the fact that we could not score, I was like, okay, this was a really incredibly fun run, but I, I don't, I can't see us. I can't see us doing this. So I like, literally, my, 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 I shifted from like, I want to win to please don't get swept. And then we didn't get swept. We won because of Josh Anderson's beautiful, beautiful diving goal. And again, that thing gave me hope because hope is an evil little thing that like, even when you're like, don't be hopeful because you're going to get let down. You still somehow become hopeful and then you get let down, which is what happened with me. I was like, don't get hopeful that cause like, you're not going to win four straight against Tampa. But I got hopeful and I was like, maybe we can become one with the 1942 Toronto Maple Leafs. The only time I've ever said I want to become one with the Maple Leafs, but I was like, maybe we can become one with the 42 Leafs and we can reverse sweep in a final. I knew it was like statistically highly improbable, but like, was anything about this run like not highly improbable? Like, no, the whole thing was. So I was like, maybe the Cinderella magic will fall through one last time. It didn't, but it's okay. Like I had fun. I had a good time. 
I'm still like, deeply hurt inside. Like, I want you to know that like this is like me trying to like get my emotions out because like it's it's been like what what day is today the 13th right so it's been like almost a week and I'm just like it's 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 still so raw like it hurts like it really does so I'm hoping that like expressing myself via clown makeup will allow me to like exercise those demons that are like making me very sad about this still what if I like incorporated clown makeup into like my routine more often because this is kind of fun like I'm kind of like is this maybe a look <laughs> I don't think it's a good look, but it's kind of fun. It's 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 nice when your outside like reflects your inside, you know. And like I am always cloning, so this is kind of fun for me. I feel like when I did this last time when I did the Among Us thing, I actually was like trying to like sort of make it seem like a bit of a tutorial. So I was kind of explaining what I'm doing. I'm like literally not. I'm just like rib. like I literally just looking at a photo of clowns that I looked up on Google, and I'm just freehanding what I think the clown society would want me to do to myself. The Vegas series was fun, because that was like the first time, because everybody was like, oh, the North Division sucks, North Canadian teams are all weak, blah, blah, blah. Like, you, it's just a fluke that you guys got this far. And then the Vegas series happened, and it was like, okay, Vegas, allegedly, on paper, was the second best team in the league. Where are they now, bitch? Not at the Stanley Cup Finals. So that was fun for me. I think I'm going to grab orange, which is a shade I don't use often in this palette. And I'm gonna like, give myself some blush just for fun just for like why not you know why the fuck not i'm just gonna draw myself a fun little circle and my god the way we like just like the way we like shut down vegas it was like people finally had to take us seriously like, they were still out there like making excuses about how like oh we don't belong here oh we're just lucky oh vegas is for which like are not showing up it has nothing to actually do with the hab skill but i think some people actually for the first time had to like sit back and be like oh are the Habs actually like good? Should we give them an ounce of credit for what they're doing here? And that was like a fun, fun little feeling. That's when, when things shifted for the worse though. It kind of became evil where like people were like, oh, maybe the Habs are not garbage. And I think that in itself cursed us. That's the other fucking thing that pisses me the fuck off. The fact that Tampa Bay's mayor being like, oh, you guys should like lose game four on purpose so that you can win game five at home in Tampa Bay. Like that didn't curse them. I'm not a superstitious person, like at all. Like I fully don't think superstitions are real, but I also think if there was justice in the world, that would have cursed them. Like that would have caused the reverse sweep. Just like her saying that would have like unleashed something. It would have like given every single member of Montreal Canadiens superpowers and then also like sent Nikita Kucherov back to the injury box. Not to say like I wish injury upon the guy, but I just feel like if there was justice in the world, tempting fate in that manner would have evoked a response, you know? What other moments made me happy? Cole Caulfield's first goal. Holy fucking shit, that thing made me, like I was so, like I wanted him to get his, can we, first of all, can we talk about like just how good he is? He's so, oh, he's so beautiful, he's so good. Like, on the ice, he's so small and so speedy and so good. I just like love that kid. Love that kid, want good things for him. As a, as a person who is very small, like I would make Cole Caulfield look like the tallest person in the world. But it's just like, it's it's so, like, it brings me so much joy to like know that people passed up on him because he was short, because he's five foot seven, which is like presumably very short for a hockey player. People passed up on him for that reason. And he is fucking tearing that shit up. Like that brings me so much joy. It's like another, as a fellow short person, I just love that for him. But just to see him get his first playoff goal made me so happy because we waited so long. Like I kept thinking it was gonna happen in previous games and it kept like, he kept missing. And then it finally, finally happened. And it was just like, I was so happy for him. And it like set something off. Like, man, he like owned that Vegas series. He got like, what, like four goals? It was just like, it was beautiful. It was so beautiful. Just like Cole in the playoffs. High, high, highlight real moment. His chemistry with Nick, like him and Nick Suzuki. Oh, just like the idea that they're gonna be like together, on lines together and like on the team together for like years to come makes me so happy. Like genuinely brings me all of the joy. Cause they're so good together. Like both of they're so good together. I love Nick Suzuki also. Like he's just such a good player. He's so like, you can already tell he's gonna be like a leader. I just like fond, incredibly fond. And like the, like the highlight moment, like can I, and I cannot explain to you just like the emotions that went through my body on what, June 24th on St. Jean Baptiste when Montreal qualified for the Stanley Cup Finals. Like I screamed when the game ended. Like I was like sitting on my couch like snuggling my dog, like fully in tears. Cause I was just so, so excited. <laughs> like I cannot, like I cannot explain to you like the emotions I was feeling. Like, I was like feeling shrimp emotions. Like I, that, that feeling unparalleled. Like I cannot, like it's nothing is gonna compare. I don't think to that feeling for a very long time. Like I've been like, getting teary, like just thinking about how excited I, got, I was and how like I cannot even imagine. Like I was so upset that I wasn't in Montreal. Cause like I got it, like I've, I've said this before in other videos, I got into hockey because I lived in Montreal during the 2008 season series when they defeated the Boston Bruins. And like, it was like so infectious. That's how I got into hockey. Cause I was like, 
I was just like, how do you not, how do you not get into this? You know, like, how, like in what scenario am I not going to be like incredibly invested in what's going on here? This, the city's like attitude is just like insane. Like it's so, it's so crazy infectious. Like how do you not, how do you not get into it? And just knowing how that was and how the city reacted to like a, like a series win against Boston. Like for, like it was like the, I think it was like the first round too. Like to know how we reacted to that and to know like the city must be having such a ball after qualifying for the fucking Stanley Cup finals, especially after the year and a half that Montreal has had, that Quebec has had, that the whole fucking country has had. The whole world really, like just after like a pandemic, like of all the people who have died, the lockdowns, all of that, to like know all of that and know how excited the city must be. I was so jealous, but just like even just sitting like on my couch in Toronto, I was like in tears excited. Like I, epic high, like I would not turn back the clock for anything because that moment was just so good. Like see Carrie Price like throw his arms up in the air, it like, just like it got me so good. Cause like knowing how hard he's worked, how he's, this is gonna be the first time he's ever gonna see a Stanley Cup final. Like, like I get teary, like I'm, I'm like tearing up now just thinking about it. Cause it was just like, that was such a, it was such a moment. Like I'm never gonna forget that ever. Like I honestly contemplated, even though I said I wasn't gonna get a Jersey because we didn't win and jerseys are really fucking expensive. I still kind of actually almost want to get a Jersey just to commemorate this run. Especially if it's the, like I, I don't, I'm, not, I'm reverse manifesting. It's like, I want Kerry to see another cup final, but in case it's the only one he ever sees in his career, like I kind of want to commemorate it in some way because like, I cannot explain to you how excited I was on June 24th. Like I was so in tears. The whole playoff run was just like worth it for that that, that that fucking moment. I was just so off the wall apeshit excited. Yeah, my face ID is like, I don't know who the fuck this is. I think I am going to grab a very small thin brush and attempt to line everything I've done with some black because I think that's what the clowns do. What else did I like about playoffs? I'm gonna get into what, what like hurt my feelings in like in a bit, but I just wanna like finish up talking about the high points because everybody loves drama. So I feel like I'm gonna leave the drama for the end. On our Habs, which is like the subreddit for the Montreal Canadiens, there was a guy who would order pizza, or who started ordering pizza during the Toronto series, and it became like lore that his pizza was the reason why the Habs were winning, and so everybody would like every day be like, I fucked up and dipped into the wrong color. But every, like every, before every game, people would like check in to see what pizza he'd ordered, because we were like, okay, we need this pizza. That was a fun part of the series, just the, the dumb, like I don't believe in superstitions, but like I developed my own weird superstitions during this series, I kind of was like, I can't do certain things because I don't want to jinx the Habs. And my friends like started using this gif of Bart Simpson that I became convinced was like the secret to success and we would like spam it during games and it was very fun. It was a fun little bonding moment. And again, these are my friends who like prior to me talking incessantly about it did not particularly care about hockey, I would say. Like g generously did like saying they did not care is like a generous way of putting it. But the power of my like not shutting the fuck up incessantly got them into it, baby, and we all harnessed the power of Bart Simpson. <sighs> Philip Deneau having pizza at his press when he would meet the press after they like won a series. Iconic, show-stopping, never been done before. Oh, it's so hard to talk and also do this. These are not good lines. Like they're not even, they're not delicate in any way whatsoever, but I'm doing my best, I'm sorry. I am not an artist. I am a fool, as you can see, like in every sense of the word. Everything about Shea Weber this series, man, like, I look at Shea Weber and my brain literally just goes dad. Like I look at him and my brain goes dad, which is like an insane, insane emotional response, but he just gives off dad vibes. And I know this because the team has also said he gives off dad vibes to like the younger guys, which is just like, again, so fucking cute. Holy shit. Just everything with the vibes of this team, like all year, just like, it was just cute. It was cute. And I'm not gonna pretend it wasn't cute. Cause it was, it was cute as shit. And I would have liked for my little hockey family to go the last, the last mile. But I'm so grateful for everything that we had. Oh, this is so fucking awful. I'm so, anytime the color black gets involved in any sort of artistic endeavor that I do, everything gets ruined, which is unfortunate because I love the color black because I'm an emo child. But my God, that bitch does not know how to not fuck shit up. God, I'm gonna need another one of these, like just like in white because I'm really running out of the white because I keep using it for everything. The other thing too that was like really fun was I started watching like the Steve Dangle streams because I don't have cable. So I can only really watch things online. So it was like the like, Steve Dangle on Sportsnet or CBC Gem. And so I started watching the Steve Dangle streams and like I kind of like was aware of Steve Dangle. Like I, like as everyone does, I watched him freak out over Toronto flopping when they lost to their Zamboni driver, when they gave up their 3-1 series lead. Like I just like, like, walk, walk. I, got, I like checking on Steve Dangle when Toronto has fucked up like more catastrophically than usual because Unfortunately, his pain brings me joy. Like it's just, it's funny, it's entertaining, which like I'm sure he knows that's why he puts it on the internet, but it, it is, 
Like I feel bad for the guy, but it is funny to watch objectively, right? So I started watching his streams. I'm like, I really like, just like when he's not, you know, having a meltdown because his team is letting him down. Dude has some really good hockey insights. I really enjoyed his perspective. So that was like a highlight of the series is what was watching him do his thing. Watching the, the Montreal fans raise $10,000 for Sick Kids Hospital just so he would wear a jersey on stream. Well, that was fun. We had fun times, man. Which is again, why I don't think rivalries don't need to be mean. Like they don't need to be mean spirited. They don't need to be like genuinely, you don't have to like genuinely be upset with real people over like sports. Like they're, 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 they're just games, right? Like it's fun to have jokey rivalries, but like if you're legitimately like wishing death upon someone because they like switch sides because they wore a jersey of a team one time because somebody raised money for a children's hospital, like go touch some grass. But the Steve Dangle series was really fun. I think like I learned a lot listening to his insights. These lips are lopsided as hell. I feel like I got like a Bosch lip, like lip injection or something. Yeah, they're super slanted. This line them in black thing was probably a mistake. Can you do about it once you've committed, right? It's insanity hours. Back to black and to lining shit. I don't know if I was talking to this to like about this with one of my friends or if it was based off of something Steve Dangle said. I don't remember where I got this idea, but Steve Dangle talks a lot about how like goalies leave their creases and if you're a goaltender, you should tend to the goal, which is a sentiment I agree with. And I have told him that if he puts that on a shirt, I will purchase the shirt. But it stresses me out so much when goalies leave their creases, especially when it's Carey Price. I trust Carey Price, but I was supposed to, like, we all saw what happened with like Flurry, right? In the, in the Vegas series. Like it stresses me out when goalies leave their goals. <laughs> and I think, and I don't know if this, I, don't, I can't claim this is an original idea because I have like a shit memory and I probably forgot if somebody else like mentioned this at some point. So don't like, drag me and be like, this isn't your idea. I know it probably isn't, but I think we should put goalies on bungee cords and like attach them to the goals. Yeah, I don't know if my roommate said this or if Steve Dangle said this. It was definitely not me. It was one of those two people, but we should put goalies on bungee cords. So it just pulls them back to their goals if they stray too far because it stresses me out when they're like out behind the net. And I'm like, there are people in front of you that are gonna like, hello, like I trust you. You know how to do your job better than I do, but your, your positioning is stressing me the fuck out. But the idea of having goalies and bungee cords, again, cute, wholesome, very funny idea. What were my lows? Cause I've talked about a lot of my highs and those were a lot of my highs. Like I said, game two, uh, the whole Tampa series, to be honest, like really stressed me out. Like I really, I know a lot of people think we would have been doomed any either way, but I disagree. Like I really was gunning for the Islanders to, to reach the cup final because I felt like that was doable. Sorry, I don't know if, when my camera cut off, but what I was saying was lows of the series. I really felt like, I really wanted to be the Islanders because I was like, I think they deserve to be in the cup final, first of all. Second of all, I just felt like the Islanders were so much more like doable. Like I was like, I don't think it's gonna be easy by any means. Like no one in the, is in the cup final because they're like bad. But I was like, I can see us winning versus the Islanders. Whereas like the minute I found out it was Tampa, I like my, like, my soul shriveled up. Like I just had such a bad feeling in my stomach. Oh fuck. I dipped into the wrong color. I dipped into the blue instead of the black. Shit. Anyways, the minute I found out it was Tampa, I just had like the worst feeling. Like I cannot explain to you how terrible I felt when I realized that's who we were facing. Cause I just like was like, I don't know. But I still tried to remain optimistic. Cause I was like, okay, of course, if this was a movie, right? Like the big bad in the end of the movie, the rival that you have to defeat, your final boss, or however you want to call it, would be the reigning champions, right? Like that that would be like, I'm not even saying this is like a dig at Tampa, like they would be framed as the bad guys. As like the ultimate bad that you have to like defeat at the end of the movie. Like that is how the movie would go. So I was like, okay. Perhaps this is just like, we're really laying it into the narrative of what's happening here. Like it maybe has to be Tampa to fulfill the true ultimate Cinderella story. I always hate doing a face paint on my eyeballs because it always like starts coming off because I'm blinking and stuff. Like it just gets so messy and like looks like shit. But I think part of this is just like how tragic it looks is like part of the aesthetic of like the catharsis of like letting it all out. It's just like my eyeballs looking like shit. So anyways, I, like, going in was like, this, this, isn't gonna, this is gonna be bad. And then watching game one, I was like, okay, we are fucking outgunned as hell. But then game two, game two was what really, like really, I was like, okay, we're doomed. Was because we didn't look outgunned in game two. We looked good in game two. We had so many shots on goal, but it was like, it didn't matter how good we were, you know? Like not with Vasilevsky and net. Like I was like, okay. I, it was like, it was like, I finally understood what it was like for other teams to have to shoot on Gary Price. Cause I was like, oh, we have to, like, it doesn't matter what we do if we can't get past Vasilevsky. You can't win a game if you can't score. And so game two was really where I was like, okay. I was so sick during the, like, the, the, the Tampa series. Like I, like I said, I had the worst physical symptoms. Like my stomach hurt so badly. Like truly, it was like a bad time for me. 
Oh God, that's so bad. Oh no. See, I did this circle with too much enthusiasm and I immediately fucked it up. Well, fuck. Okay, let's try to fix this shit. Okay, I'm trying to fix this orange and I think I just made it worse. So I'm just gonna let it dry for a bit and then try to go over it. The other thing that sucked was the injury of it all. The thing with me is like, I, there are a lot of things about hockey, just like the way hockey operates on a professional level, especially that like piss me off. I hate the things are not called the same in the regular season and playoffs. I think that's stupid. It, like it's either against the rules or it's not. Make up your mind. If you want it, like I don't, it's not even like, a, oh, well, if you can't take playoffs, like don't be in the playoffs or don't watch. If it's allowed in playoffs, let it be allowed in the regular season. Like I don't like make up your minds about what you want the sport to look like. And I don't, Apparently it happens in every sport. I don't watch other sports. I just think it's dumb. You know, like either something's against the rules or it's not like make, make up your minds. Things like across the same series were not getting called the same way. Like why was a high stick on Corey Perry allowed even though he was like gushing blood all over like the ice, but like high stick later in the series done by the Canadians. Oh, suddenly, suddenly it's like, it's a minor. Suddenly four minutes in the penalty box. Like make up your minds. What is allowed? What is not allowed? Cons consistency in the refing, right? Please, thank you. But the other thing about like hockey attitudes that pisses me the fuck off is just this, this weird this compulsion to like play quietly injured and it's like a point of pride almost and i get it you know like you don't want to let your team down you don't want to be out with an injury in a crucial moment but it's also like it's, it's why are we glorifying working in pain why i don't know maybe you're gonna maybe i just don't get the like athlete mentality like that could be it but i just feel like it's like problematic to glorify playing hurt and for people to like glorify the idea of, of, of like hiding injuries because you don't want to let your team down like are you gonna let the team down more if you're playing hurt or if you sit it out and let someone healthy take your spot you know i don't know maybe i just like this is, there's a reason i don't work professionally for any sports teams like perhaps i just do not get it in which case like yeah I, i'm gonna proudly say i do not get this idea this like mentality of like playing hurt and i know every team does it like it's not a montreal specific problem it's literally just like a weird macho like even if you're injured, if the team needs you, that comes first, whatever, cool. But I also think it's kind of fucked up, sorry. What else pissed me the fuck off? Oh my God, I didn't go around my nose, holy shit. I knew I was forgetting something. I was like, what, what am I forgetting to do? And it's, it's cause I didn't outline my nose, which is gonna go terribly, I already know this, but let us attempt. Oh, I'm so mentally ill, you guys. Fuck, fuck me. So yeah, I hate that. The weird tendency to play injured, I think that's stupid. I think that's dumb. It always like hurts my heart. Cause it's like, we can see who's injured, right? Like we, like when someone's like really injured, you can kind of tell. But then even when it's like, you kid, like they don't disclose injuries and they, they disclose when the season is over, like, oh, these 20 people were all playing like with their limbs falling off and they're all duct taped together. Like by the end of the day, and I know that this is not different, like every team was duct taped together by the end of the season, but the Montreal Canadiens were duct taped together. They, they, they were like th four functioning, like healthy adults put together. Like, like they were not, they were like held together purely by tape, which is like impressive, but it makes me sad. Like, I, I, again, we, I don't think we should be glorifying it, which I think right now, hockey as a macho men's sport has a tendency to do, to glorify, like playing through injuries. I've heard like, like people playing through like <sighs> punctured lungs or broken limbs, like whatever. This is off topic. The other thing that pissed me off, the, again, I, I kind of touched on this, the ref thing was all over the place. It was so inconsistent. It's like, I, I don't actually think there's a conspiracy to keep Canadian teams from winning the cup. I think, the league would like it if Canadian teams didn't win the cup, just for, from purely like business financial positions. Like, in, like the NHL makes more money when Canadian teams are not in the cup final, and when Americans tune in just because by population, like there are more Americans than Canadians, and so when two American teams in like big cities are playing, those populations are more likely likely to tune in, which makes the league more money. Also. The thing with Leafs fans and Habs fans and like Canucks fans and just like Canadian hockey fans, so it doesn't matter how shit your team is, you will tune in to watch them because unfortunately we are an incredibly hockey whipped country. Whereas in the States, like in a lot of markets, people will not watch unless their team is doing well. So yes, I mean, they still prefer the teams in non-traditional hockey markets, make it to the final and then end up winning or whatever. Like, I, I do think that's like a legitimate thing. I don't think there's an actual conspiracy to rig it. I do think statistically, I can see how people go, that's strange when there's what, going to be 32 teams, there's 31 now, but for a long time, there was what, 30 teams in the, the NHL and like eight of them, seven or eight are Canadian. And we haven't had a Canadian winner since 1993. Like statistically, that's so unlikely. So like, I get where the conspiracies come from. I don't actually think there is a conspiracy, but it's really fucking hard to tell people who, who think there's a conspiracy they're wrong when the way you ref makes no absolute, like, I don't even understand every single rule of hockey and I still look at like choices the refs make where it's like two identical situations and they call it differently where I'm like, okay, what is the situation here? Like, do you have a grudge against this team? Like, that's just what it looks like. And then you have like, and then stuff like owning up to like, oh, this was inconsistent. Oh, we made a mistake here. Gary Bettman and the NHL are just like, oh, we have the greatest refs in like major league sports. Like, no, you don't. Where? Where, where are your best refs? 
find some consistency and maybe people will believe you. But like until that happens, no, I don't think you have the best refs actually. I think your refs are kind of bad at their jobs to be honest with you. And like, you can't even, like, players can't even say that. Nobody can be like, hey, this is kind of sketch and shitty because you'll get fined for criticizing the refs. But then the refs don't actually have to answer to media. So it's like, okay, cool. There's no accountability here whatsoever. I'm a mess. There's like paint all over my hands. There's paint all over my like chair. There's paint all over everything. I'm surprised there isn't more in my hair. So I guess, I guess my like bunny headband like did the trick. I'm trying to decide if there are more embellishments I want to make. Do I want to give myself like really big eyelashes? That may be kind of fun, right? To like really prove that I'm a girl clown. I'm a girl clown who has a lot of hockey opinions for someone who doesn't understand a lot of things about the sport. Oh, that's fun. That's so cute. Oh my God, I'm a little, I'm a little, I'm a little clown. I love being a little clown, you know? Sometimes you just, you just gotta like be a little unhinged, have a good time. This palette is a fucking shit show, but I do recommend it. I've said this before. I think this is a great palette to just fuck around with. It's like not bad for your skin compared to like, I feel like other like cheaper palettes. It does the damn job. I'm gonna need to get it like a replacement white soon because I feel like I use the white a lot and I'm almost, I've, I've definitely hit pan eye, but I'm almost like, I'm running out of it. The other thing I wanted to say was, okay, I kind of like didn't really talk about the lows, but like, like I said, the entire Tampa series was low, but I'm gonna talk about some things, but the Tampa situation that I think were like blown kind of out of proportion, to be honest with you. One, the cap thing. Do I think the cap situation sucked? Yes. Do I think Tampa Bay cheated? No, they just like exploited a loophole that they tried to close several years prior and nobody wanted to close it with them. So they were like, okay, well, fine, fuck you. If you're not gonna close it, we're gonna use it. Like I'm not mad at Tampa for that. I'm mad at the NHL for that because it is a stupid fucking loophole and I think it should be closed. Like I, like, I don't understand why you are not allowed to be over the salary cap during the season, but you can do it during playoffs. Like I, like, I don't even think the issue is like you can put people on LTIR, like that, that is fine. I just think you should not be allowed to then put those people on the ice during playoffs if it takes you like, over the salary cap. Like, do you have a salary cap or not? I also just think I have issues with the salary cap in, in general because again, like it's a flat cap, which isn't fair to just Canadian markets in general, but also just in general places that have lower tax rates like Florida, like Florida can underpay its players because their the tax rate is so much lower that more people will go to Florida because they know ultimately being paid $7 million in Florida and being paid $7 million in Ontario are two completely different scenarios because of the amount of taxes you pay. So it just imagine, like that in itself immediately puts Canadian teams at a disadvantage. So it's not like Canadian teams are cursed by the NHL, but just the system that is in place is, disadvantage, is disadvantageous to Canadian teams. Is that a word? I think it is. The other thing is, okay, so after Tampa Bay won, right? Like, so Nikita Kucherov got all drunk or whatever, and then decided to do his press shit. And like, I get, he was like coming off a big win, blah, blah, blah. He was happy, whatever. Kudos to him, but my God, was he, he was doing a great impression of an incredibly unlikable person. Like, say what you want about anything. I am a person who values like good sportsmanship. Like more than anything in sports, like a, a display of good sportsmanship means everything to me. Like it truly would, like that, that's the shit that get, again, because I'm an emotional person. That's the thing that gets me about sports is like really emotional moments. Like somebody who like, like a person hurts themselves and their opponent like helps them across the finish line or I don't know, like just looks like that. Like, like things that display classiness and good sportsmanship are really important to me. And so when you've already won, I get that you were drunk and you were happy or whatever, to go up on a podium and start, and people are like, oh, he wasn't trying to be insulting, but like to pretend you don't know, or not even pretend, just like to act like you are too good. And I don't care what his intention was. He, what he put on display was him pretending he was too good to know Marc-Andre Fleury's name or Connor Hellebuck's name. Like, like and I get he was in defense of like his goalie, right? It's not like one, Vasilevsky's never won a Vezina before. He has, he's won the Vezina before. Do I want to line my eyes? Do I want to go like full sexy clown? No, I don't think so. I think part of this is like the tragedy of it is just like looking insane. I'm gonna try to fix this orange bit, but I do think it's kind of like bizarre to me. But like two, like it, like people are acting like in order to defend like Vasilevsky from like what he just won a Stanley Cup, like and he won like the Conn Smythe, like he won like MVP. So like I don't know what you think you were defending him from. Like nobody was like he's a bad player, but to be like oh like I don't remember the names of these goalies who shouldn't have won the Vezina. Okay, buddy. I just think perhaps if you cannot handle your beer, don't run your mouth in a press conference where you're gonna shit on like really respected, really good people. Like Marc-Andre Fleury, like I have so much respect for, I love Marc-Andre Fleury so much. Like if I was not a Habs fan, I would probably be a Pens fan. So like I have been following the Penguins almost as long as I've been following the Canadians. And like, I like was like, again, I was really sad when he got traded to Vegas and then he seemed to flourish there and I was like really happy for him. But it's one of those things where it's like, do not shit on Marc-Andre Fleury, who was like, I feel like one of the most universally respected people in the NHL to make your goalie look better. Like, it's just, it's not classy, dude. It's not classy. It makes people think less of you. So like, not only is he like taking his opportunity, instead of just being like excited he won or like taking his opportunity to just like be stoked he won. He's using it to like shit on his peers, essentially. 
people he works with because it, this is his job. So he's shitting on his peers. And then he has the audacity to be like, oh, well, Montreal, like, they were acting like they won the Stanley Cup after they won one game. They, like, people are just like happy, dude. Nobody was acting like they won the Stanley Cup. Like if Montreal had won the Stanley Cup, the fucking country would be on fire. Like, I'm sorry. Like that was not Montreal has won this. Like, I'm sorry. Like, I, like, again, not to be like Tampa has no fans. Tampa has fans. But like, I'm sorry the fan base in Tampa is so lackluster that you don't know what it looks like to have like a hockey town like celebrate a win. But that was just them excited. They had won their first Stanley Cup final game in 28 years. That was that. And to be like, oh, well, the last series was their cup final. Like, fuck you too. Again, you're, you're inadvertently, first of all, dunking on your own fan base because you're like, oh, they're not passionate enough, clearly. But two, like, you won. Why are you being such a sore winner? And like, the thing that grinds me isn't even like what he said or what he did. What grinds my fucking gears is everybody who's like, oh, well, people are always asking for NHL players to have more personality. Yeah, this is true. I think NHL players should be allowed to have more personality. I think the, the weird like need to like crush nonconformity and to make every NHL player like respond to questions like a robot in, in all in the name of like team unity, I think that's bullshit. Like I think it's a dumb. I think potential players should be allowed to show more personality. I think people being allowed to be themselves does not in any way reduce team cohesiveness or take away from like team elements. I think it's a dumb. But to act like being a douche, like that sure is like that. That's a personality trait. Like it fully is. Like you can be an asshole. Like that can be a personality trait. But to act like that's the only way a hockey player can show personality is absurd to me. One, two, it's a double standard for me because like you know if like PK Subban would do like a fraction of anything like, implying that like a, go like a goalie on a, an opposing team after he'd won something was like not worth remembering their name or wasn't good at their jobs or like whatever. He would get so much fucking shit. He got shit for his suit choice to the NHL awards. Like, and that that is a player that is overflowing with personality, but is like always classy about it, you know? And so it just, it just that whole thing grinded my gears. And anyways, all this to say, when Florida starts to go underwater, I will have no mercy solely because Nikita Kucherov, who is not, who is from Russia, but currently represents the state of Florida and the city of Tampa. Because he was rude to me, I will have no mercy. That's all, that's all I'm saying. Like, we'll see who has the last laugh, buddy. That, that was mean, I don't, I feel bad, I have friends in Florida. I don't want them to go underwater. But I also just think that like Nikita Kucherov can and will definitely get booed every single time he steps into Montreal, which is kind of fun. Like it's, it's kind of nice to have an enemy, but also like, just like, how hard is it to like be gracious in victory? You know, like you, you won the cup, like you do have to be a dick about it. I guess, yes, like apparently you do. Sorry you can't handle your booze and like Bud Light got you like fucking smashed as hell like in 10 minutes, but it's on you, buddy. What else did I wanna say? There was a couple other things I wanted to touch on before I finish this video. I'm gonna try to like get around my eyebrows a little more actually. One, again, I think I already mentioned that like Tampa Bay damaging the cup and then the cup having to come back to Montreal. I think part of this is, is that. That like led to my, my Joker breakdown, I think. The other thing that has me like on edge is um the expansion draft. Because again, like I said, every single member of this Habs team has felt like me familia, you know, like I don't want to lose them. They feel like my family, even though none of them know who I am. I'm just like, please, please don't take them away from me. Please don't separate them. Even though like, even without the expansion draft, like I know some of them are just like not coming back, but it is mean and it hurts my feelings. It hurts my feelings. It hurts my like love for the concept of found family, etc., etc. But I especially am like thinking about the expansion draft and how Jake Allen, has a really good chance of being taken by Seattle. I don't want that to happen because I'm literally just cleaning up. Sorry if I'm not like doing a whole lot to my face. I'm literally just cleaning up the parts that are like upsetting me. But what I was saying was Jake Allen, just having him play with Price and being able to take a load off Carey Price has been so nice this season. And they seem to have a really good dynamic off the ice. Like I remember reading a quote from like an, a presser or an interview or something where he was talking about how like he and Carey really get along and they were really excited to like go fishing together now that like the pandemic is starting to wind down and stuff. And I just was like, we're a little family and I don't want them to be separated. So like Seattle, please don't take Jake Allen away from us, please. I also just like the idea of Carrie having like a reliable backup. Like that makes me feel a lot better, like on the inside, just like knowing that that's like an option that he has. This like eye on the side is like super fucked up. But yeah, that, I'm very nervous about the expansion draft, but I'm also excited. Like it's, 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 it's exciting to get a new NHL team and I'm kind of excited to see what Seattle looks like, especially like, Seeing how Vegas turned out, like Vegas everybody thought was gonna like kind of crash and burn the first couple of years. They came out of the gate like real fucking good. So I'm excited to see what happens with Seattle, especially because Seattle as a, as a hockey market makes more sense to me than the city of Las Vegas does. And just the Kraken, such a cool idea, such a cool logo. I'm excited for them, I'll be really honest. And the last thing I want to say is completely off the topic of anything else we've talked about this video, but it is related to hockey and I think it's a good note to finish this video on. I think people that ship hockey players are like galaxy brain levels of smart. Like I fully think the levels of like brain power, you need to like look at a bunch of predominantly cis het white dudes, not all white dudes and 
presumably not all cishet because like statistically that's not a thing. But like look at a sport that is like the epitome of like macho masculinity and decide, and again, that crushes non, like crushes any semblance of like non-conformity and like turns out like robots basically. <laughs> To take that sport, pick players, and just like dedicate your life to finding ways to ship them romantically, like fiction-wise. That's like the PhD levels of shipping. Like that is not my journey, but not gonna like unironically, I think RPF hockey shippers are like braver than the Marines in some capacities. Just because like the level of like loops, like like you have to jump through so many hoops to make that work. And there's so many people that fucking do it. I'm like, oh my god. Which is not really linked to anything in this video, but I, I just really needed to like take a moment to just like, I need to like take a pour one out for hockey RPF shippers. Because like, my God, literally if, if they gave out like degrees for shipping, PhDs, PhDs across the board. That is like, I cannot think of a more com like insane thing to ship. And in a space that does it so fucking well, you have to put together, like you have to put together through so many concepts to make that work. And they do it. And I, I've like, I've, I've poked around in there they write some fucking masterpieces. Like again, it's not my journey personally because again, I, I don't look at those players and think chemistry in that manner, but literally degrees, like college, like dissertations should be written about like the mentality you, it requires to ship hockey players. And if you are going to tell me that, oh, it's like weird to ship real people. I think if it upsets hockey players that random people on the internet write stupid fiction about them, like smooching their teammates, I think they can look at the millions of dollars they have in their bank accounts and they will feel so much better. So like the levels of having to battle through like the inherent homophobia of like hockey and the inherent, like, like just the problematic nature of like how shitty, frankly, a lot of hockey players can be. And just the way the league itself like actively suppresses like any sort of like non-conformity. Like there's like, there's a very, like I, this is a whole other video. There's a very obvious reason. I think we've never had an out NHL player thus far. Not even just like active, just like period. Like an NHL player hasn't come out. I, it, it's because of the way the NHL is and the way hockey attitudes are. Unfortunately, like for all the like you, you can plays that we put out there, like the attitudes within the league are moving at a snail's place. So I think it is a very cool, like I, I mean this legitimately, like you can say what you want about real person shipping. I think it is legitimately very cool of a bunch of like people to almost combat that in their own way by shipping these people. Like it's, it's like a, it just feels like an act of defiance, I think for a bunch of people, like predominantly the queer people to like queer women especially, but just like queer people in general and women in general to look at this macho, homophobic, very conformist sport and decide that they're going to take the players and strip, turn them into little Barbie dolls for the little scenarios on the internet. Like, I think it's fun. I think it's fresh. I don't think there's like, I fully think there's nothing wrong with RPF. Like the crown, the TV show is RPF. I think any sort of play about like historical figures is RPF, Hamilton is RPF. Like RPF is just a thing that happens. I don't think it's like the way people on the internet act like it's like somehow like an invasion of privacy. It's only an invasion of privacy if you then send what you've written up to the people it's about. I think as long as you keep it in your own spaces, it's totally fine, it's kosher, do whatever. And on this video, I just want to wrap up, that's what I want to wrap it up on. I want to say thank you to the Montreal Canadiens for taking like probably five years off my lifespan with this playoff run because the amount of stress I went through, I cannot overemphasize the level of like genuine insane like stress i went through but i had so much fun i would like i can't wait to do it again like i miss hockey so much like it's part of this video it's like i wanted to get out my grief and talk about the good times but also just like i really miss hockey already like it was so weird after like on the friday after we lost on the wednesday to not have a hockey game and then on monday again it was so weird to not have a hockey game and i think tomorrow on wednesday it's gonna be so weird to not have a hockey game like it was just like it was just so fun. It was so exciting to like, just like yell and scream and be on the edge of my seat and just like <sighs> believe in something, especially after the year, the year and a half, after like, the, the pandemic, right? Like it's been so hard and it was just fun. It was really, really fun. And so like, shout out to them. I'm gonna take my bunny ears off now that I've done the hard parts of this, but I just want like, yeah, just thank you to the Montreal Canadiens. I'm so excited to see what happens next year. Like I, I just think there's gonna be so much, there's so much left to do with this team and I'm, like for the, the part, I'm hoping they can keep as much of it together as they can because this was like so magical. Like it really, like I cannot explain how magical it felt. Like it just felt like I'm not gonna forget this ever. Like for the rest of my life, I'm gonna remember how I felt on June 24th when we won the, the Vegas series. I'm gonna remember, I'm just gonna remember so much about just like the past like month and a half. Like I really am. And I, I, and I know I'm not gonna get a jersey because I, that was my thing with myself was like, I was like, if we win, I'm going to get a jersey and we didn't. So I'm not going to do that to save money. But I think I'm going to try to get some kind of like final merch just to like commemorate this in some way, because like it literally was just like, it was so, it was just so fun. It really was. So yeah, shout out to the Montreal Canadiens. Thank you for an amazing playoff run. Thank you for an amazing season. 
I am going to continue to manifest that Carrie Price lifts that cup over his head before he hangs it up. But you never know, man. Life is short. Lots of people never even get to this moment. So I am just gonna cherish it. I had so much fun. This makeup looks insane, but I feel like it was nice. Just talk it all out. I feel I, I do I do feel lighter. Like genuinely, like I feel like putting this all on, talking it all out, getting all my coffee grievances out. It was just it was all very cathartic. It's so freaking hot and sweaty and humid, but I'm this video is gonna be so long, so I'm gonna wrap this up. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the thumbs up button. I would really appreciate that. If you want to follow me on other social media platforms, you can follow me on Twitter and on Instagram. And if this insanity didn't scare you away, I do post videos every Wednesday, so if you hit that subscribe button, you can come hang out with me next week. And I will see you guys all then. Bye!